state that the Minister's meeting is being held in compliance with all the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231. It was properly noticed and has been uh, posted and certified by the clerk. All the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Here. Ms. Roberts. Here. Mr. Finlay. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Ms. Smith. Here. Mr. Young. Here. Mr. Jeffrey. Here. Please join me in select group.
Next up, Lieutenant Tracy, Sergeant Siri, and Sergeant Coleman. On February 10th, 2020, Lieutenant Tracy, Sergeant at the time, Sergeant Siri, and Sergeant Coleman, patrolman at the time, responded to DeVito Trail on a medical call. On arrival, they found the patient lying on the floor in the living room with family members performing CPR. At that time, Sergeant Siri, a certified EMT, assessed the patient and found a faint pulse. Sergeant Siri immediately began rescue breathing. After a few cycles of rescue breathing and reassessment, the patient was found to no longer have a pulse. Lieutenant Tracy, Sergeant Siri, and Sergeant Coleman immediately began CPR and set up the AED. During a reassessment, it was found that patrol regained a pulse from the patient. Opacon EMS and St. Clair's paramedics arrived on scene and the patient was transported to the hospital with a pulse. Their quick thinking, rendering CPR and rescue breathing saved the patient's life. With this, I award Lieutenant Tracy, Detective Sergeant Siri, and Sergeant Coleman with a life-saving award. Officer Bandersky and Officer Lala. On September 6, 2021, Sergeant Van Cully, Officer Bandersky, and Officer Lalo responded to Knox Way for the report of an unconscious male. Upon arrival, Officer Lalo located the male unconscious and unresponsive on the floor. He immediately radioed for Sergeant Van Cully and Officer Bandersky that medical equipment was needed and, and started CPR. When Bing, Sergeant McCulley and Officer Bandersky arrived, the AED was set up while Officer Lalo continued CPR. During CPR, two shocks were delivered to the patient and through the continu continuation of CPR, the patient regained a pulse and began to breathe on his own. OPAC on EMS arrived on scene and transported the patient to the hospital. Several days later after this call, the patient came to police headquarters to thank these officers for saving his life. And tonight, no one knows this but me and the captain, we have a special guest. Joseph, will you please come forward? Their quick thinking, rendering CPR, saved Joseph's life. With this, I award Sergeant Van Cully, Officer Lalo, and Officer Bandersky the Life Saving Award. February 26, 2022, Sergeant Siri, Officer Gettner, and Officer Caps responded to Coolidge Trail on a report of a suicide with a gun. Upon arrival, Sergeant Siri found the patient slumped over in the bathroom with a gunshot wound to the left side of his face. He was partially alert but nonverbal at the time. Patrols immediately provided first aid, advising dispatch for medics and a helicopter. The patient was transported to Morristown Medical Center where he lived. Due to their quick thinking and rendering first aid, they saved the patient's life. With this, I award Sergeant Siri, Officer Gettner, and Officer Caps a life saving award. On August 
August 29, 2022, while on loan to the DEA, Officer Vandersky was on surveillance in Brooklyn, New York, when he and other agents noticed that their target exited the residence and put something in his vehicle. The target then returned to his res residence, and when he exited again, he was carrying a duffel bag. Three males approached the target and pistol whipped him. At that point, Officer Vandersky and the other agents intervened, intervened and stopped the assault. Two of the three men fled on foot, and one was apprehended. They recovered two guns and a taser on scene. Vandersky's quick response to this assault saved this man from serious injury or death. With this, I award Officer Vandersky the Honorable Service Award. The other two agents are here in the back as well. To give them <laughs> Officer Kern, Officer Zabita, and Sergeant Janasco, please come forward. These three officers received an award in Byron Township for their actions but I would like to recognize them tonight as well. On January 31st of 2022, Sergeant Janosko, Officer Kern, and Officer Sabita responded to Byron Township to assist with a vehicle that drove into a pond. Upon their arrival, the vehicle was sinking into the pond. Byron officers were already in the water, swimming out with a female, and the male was floating unconscious in the water. Officer Kern and Zabita immediately entered the water and swam out to assist with getting the male out of the water. Once near the shoreline, Sergeant Janasco entered the water and helped pull the male to shore. The male did not have a pulse and patrol started CPR. They were able to restore a pulse and breathing before the male was transported to the hospital. I would like to recognize these officers for a job well done for their quick response and action in assisting the residents and officers in our neighboring jurisdiction. software, surveillance equipment, interview skills, countless contacts with other agencies, the list can go on. During 2022, Detective Krause has closed out every case assigned to him with an exceptional manner. He is not one to let cases sit or go stagnant. He works with the drive to stop crime, to solve cases, and to make an impact through his work. Detective Krause has never lost the drive to be proactive, even after 24 years of service. That drive can be seen not only in his work with this department, but also through his work with the county task force. From 2022 to 2023, Detective Krause has assisted in over 30 investigations involving the distribution of illegal drugs throughout Sussex County. He has personally been the case detective on three investigations, all which resulted in first degree charges being filed against defendants. Detective Krause continues to be positive, proactive, an influential member of the Hopakon Police Department. For his continued hard work and dedication, he is recognized as Officer of the Year and presented with the Chief's Award for 2022.
have a civilian award to give out as well, I'd like to call up Officer Crunch. Thank you everybody for coming tonight. I'd like to call Isabella Barbario. Barbario. On the night of July 18th, 2023, the Wapakan Borough Center received a call from Isabella Barbario. This was a highly unusual call for service as the victim was located in West Wittering, Queens. In the Barbiero was in a Discord internet video chat with over a dozen other individuals, and one of them, a 15-year-old pregnant girl, began to attempt suicide by overdose and cutting herself. All the individuals in the video chat left the chat and took no action to assist this girl, with the exception of Miss Barbiero. She had the resolve and fortitude to not only call 911, but she remained in the chat and assisted the dispatcher in directing the victim on how to fashion a tourniquet, obtain key information so that the Hopakon police were able to contact the Sussex Police Constabulary in the United Kingdom. Even after the arrival, the Hopakon officers at her home, Ms. Barbaro, remained the lead communicator with the victim. She helped keep the victim conscious and showed she truly cared about helping a complete stranger. The Hopakon police were able to direct the Sussex Police Constabulary to the victim where they had to force entry into her apartment. Ms. Barrio's actions ultimately resulted in saving the life of this young woman. She showed the selfless qualities of service and compassion for others that make her among the best of the Opakon Borough. Due to her actions on July 18, 2023, the Opakon Borough Police are presenting her with the Police Department's Civilian Service Award. Thank you, and God bless.
During Vincoli's years in the department, he became a fire instructor, eventually taking over as the supervising fire instructor, a drug recognition expert, a field training officer, and a field training coordinator. He has received the Mother Against Drunk Driving Award four times, New Jersey Top Gun Award in 2012, Honorable Service Award in 2013, Exceptional Service Award in 2014, Officer of the, and Officer of the Year in 2015. And now, in 2023, I'm proud to announce his promotion to lieutenant. Will the family please come forward?
most uh, most grat grateful uh, in his retirement that he will uh, be safe and, and uh, have a great life in retirement. Uh, just want to go on to uh, a reminder that on 9-11 the there'll be a ceremony at Fireman's Park, which is at Borough Hall to comm commemorate the 2001 9-11 attack. Uh, but just one correction in the calendar, it, it's listed at 11 a.m. The actual time is 10 a.m. So correction on the calendar, the ceremony will start at 10 a.m. That's all I have. Thank you. Rick, you're up. Uh, I would also like to say congratulations to all the promotions and the police department. We have a great police department, with great officers. I want to thank you for their, thank them for their service. Uh, about a week and a half ago, we had a fire committee meeting. You'll see some stuff on the agenda tonight. We're going to reject the bid that came through, um, and then set up for rebidding it, and also um, setting up some funding for it. So uh, hopefully uh, everything's going to go smoothly. We'll save a little money, and uh, the fire department will get a nice new truck. That's it. Thank you. Uh, no. uh, thank you. <laughs> well, at the risk of being redundant, um, I certainly want to congratulate and thank all of our police force that received awards. Uh, most specifically, I want to congratulate Lieutenant Wojtak on his retirement and Lieutenant Ian Cully and Sergeant Kern on their uh, promotions. Uh, starting with environmental, the Environmental Commission obviously is getting ready for Hopakon Days, which is this Saturday, um, September 9th. It officially starts at 12 o'clock. There will be people there earlier starting to set up uh, that was the brunt of a lot of their conversation in the last meeting. A couple of upcoming events uh, very soon. September 16th is sh Shred Day, and September 23rd uh, is from 9 to 12 is the townwide cleanup. And they also had some conversations regarding, regarding sustainable Jersey, invasive species, and Winton Park. Uh, from recreation, recreation has actually had two meetings in the last month, one of them most specifically for pack on days. First meeting, they discussed, they're already starting to get ready for basketball. They, they appointed a new di uh, uh, director this year. It's the same gentleman that did it last year. He did a great job. The gentleman's name is Sean O'Malley. Uh, the facility usage forms are in. They also talked about a new field request that they got and they had some conversation finalizing uh, street hockey spring season. Um, for Opacon days, uh, what's going on right now, there's going to be popcorn there, freezer pops, water, hot dogs, all going to be given away. There's games for the young children. They have two bouncy houses coming in. Um, I think it's going to be great. Uh, as I understand it, the marching band is going to be there doing a dunk tank. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's what no. they have. <laughs> I didn't know about that. Okay, maybe you're in it. I'm yeah. proud. <laughs> anyway. Um, a lot of that was subject to other, other uh, organizations, uh, but that's the word that they had at the time. So <laughs> everybody's looking forward to pack on days. I'm sure it'll be a great event. That's all, Mayor. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. One last thing. Not a committee report, uh, but I'm happy to see our high school football team is, is doing very well this year. Right now they're 2-0. They are in Fort Lee this Friday, so if you want a nice drive and see a nice football game, you can go to Fort Lee. The following Friday, September 15th, they are home again versus Dover. Uh, so that could be a good game. So kudos to them. Thank you. Thank you. Brian, you're up. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, our next meeting is this Friday, uh, September 8th. Uh, the next B2B breakfast is September 12th. Uh, the Young Professionals Night Out is September 13th. Uh, big event up at the Sussex Fairgrounds, the Sussex County Day, that's on September 17th. I'll be up there representing the PACCON. Uh, our next B2B or uh, after hours is on September 28th. Uh, over at the Sussex County Municipal Utilities Authority, if you missed the town paper shredding one, the next paper shredding at the MUA is September 15th. Okay. And that's all I have. Thank you, Ryan. Great, you're up. Um, first, I'd like to be redundant as well and say how impressed and proud I am of our wonderful um, police department and all the promotions and so forth. I find them all to be wonderful, wonderful people in the interactions that I've had. Uh, I, I, I was very 
so exciting to live in a town that actually has a police department and, and they're really quality. So I wanna say thank you to them. Uh, Safely Back Home is moving forward again. We've already succeeded in doing, as you probably all know, the school um, and the smile homes. However, we're gonna reach out again to the school, to the children to talk about their grandparents if anybody has problems that they might need the tool of Safely Back Home, which is a label on your arm that uh, helps people that wander or run away. Um, also, we're reaching out again to the seniors um, in all facets to uh, re reassess um, do they want to have this tool to help them. We're not getting as much reaction as we thought we would. So if anybody knows anyone that needs that service, please feel free to reach out to either myself, Brad, or um, the um, uh, Wellness Center uh, who coordinate it. And that's all I have. Thank you. Dave, the administrative report. Thank you, Mayor. To uh, pick up on the comments about the police department, I can uh, tell you that we had a good deep bench for both uh, lieutenant and sergeant candidates. I had the uh, opportunity and pleasure to meet uh, along with the chief of police and the captain of police with the candidates uh, on the civil service list for lieutenant and sergeant. And uh, we can be confident that as um, additional vacancies in those ranks come up, we have a, a good uh, uh, bench to choose from. Um, the Environmental Commission is, a, is a formulating a, a new program, a Adopt the Storm Drain program, that will be um, formally presented to the council at our uh, September 20th meeting. Uh, I know that they're looking to uh, get some information out on Saturday at Back Home Day about it, and uh, basically they're, they're modeling it off of uh, some of the green team programs throughout the state and specifically out of the Glen Rock uh, program in Bergen County. Um, at DPW, they have recently uh, uh, completed uh, field grooming at the baseball and softball field. Um, the air commissioner has been replaced at the senior center. Um, power washing of the senior center has occurred on the exterior of the building. Uh, we've been involved with roadside milling. Um, on the PFAS updates, Mariner as well. The tanks have been delivered, the backwash line has been installed, <coughs> plumbing has begun, and immediate delivery is scheduled this week um, between I 5 and the 9 gates. And that's what I have uh, tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Public comments. I'll entertain a motion to open the meeting to the public. So moved. Second. All right. All right. All right. An opportunity is given to the public for commentary. Comments are limited to one comment for no more than five minutes. Welcome, public. <clears throat> Good evening to the governing body. My name is Art Benedetto. I do not reside at Two Windsor Avenue, which is where the Board of Education office is, but I feel like I lived there recently. <laughs> I, um, I'm here quickly to talk about our referendum on September 26th. Our school district has four schools, the youngest of which was built in 1980. Two of the other schools were built in the late 60s, and one was built in 1971. Many of the items in the school that are on this referendum, and there are 25 projects, or 25 different projects, many of those items are based on replacement. For example, roofs. The windows at WMU <coughs> are original. We cannot get parts to fix them. HVAC systems that are original to the building. There's no air conditioning in the building. Um, the HVAC upgrades will provide air conditioning in the, in the projects that are listed. This is a difficult circumstance for the town because we're asking the, the uh, voters to approve a $26 million referendum. It is offset by 33% of state aid. And you know that we've taken a beating with state aid and this is a decent thing. It reduces the cost uh, of the project, not significantly, but, it's a, but a decent amount. <clears throat> I've sent information um, to the governing body I was uh, honored that Mayor Francis and Mr. Shingalar attended one of my meetings on, uh, on the referendum and, and what it means. Essentially, it's a yes or no vote for people to decide whether or not the questions we put forward um, are appropriate. I'm not asking people to vote yes. I only ask them to educate themselves. Uh, I'm very hopeful that the people who review the information on our website know that it's the truth and that it's, I'm trying to be as transparent as possible 
as I said, I'm not asking people to vote yes. Every presentation I make, I ask people to educate themselves. I would appreciate from the governing body at their convenience any time constructive criticism on what you know about the project or what you'd like to know. You know my email, you know where I don't live, but I'm there a lot. God bless you all, thank you very much. Thank you. Did we ask a question of Mark? No. With Art, Art with, with uh, all due respect and stuff, with um, the referendum and everything, um, I'm assuming, did the whole school board vote for this, for the referendum to support this? It was an eight or one abstention, I believe. One abstention, okay. Um, did, did you guys discuss much, much about the Fosio study regarding buildings and everything? Because I've done some research and, and stuff, and, and it comes up a little bit in the face that you hire. What's that? What's that? The feasibility study? Yeah, the feasibility study for the buildings, and so you pay a lot of money for that. The yeah. feasibility study was undertaken to ascertain whether or not the closing of the Tulsa Trail School would be a possibility, and, and it, it, it was. The board did spend a lot of money on that, um, and that's a very, it's a very much a possibility should this referendum go down. Um, I can't give, I can't put forth what will happen if the referendum fails because it looks like I'm trying to sell it. But that conversation went on long before I came back about closing the Tulsa Trail School, and that very well may happen. Um, interestingly, the roof of the Tulsa Trail School is, is in bad condition, and even if we close it. A, we lose it as an educational facility. B, believe it or not, our enrollment is going up again for the second time in two years, and that hasn't happened in a long, long time. And I believe the numbers that I'll get tomorrow are going to show a significant increase as opposed to a small increase last year. I've always said in my literature that I've sent out that the closing of Tulsa Trail will be more dependent upon enrollment than upon the feasibility study. Um, I'm going to say this upfront and honestly. Before I left the first time, I gave the board a three page document that said we could close the Tulsa Trail School. It said the same thing as the feasibility study. Um, it's a, it was a tough decision. And it shows that they did. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I have, I have <coughs> just a couple questions there. On, on the literature that I've seen, it's basically talking about. Six million dollar uh, bond referendum, and nowhere have I seen anything about the interest aspect of it. I can go ahead and delve into that very quickly, sir. We estimated the, the bond, if the referendum passed, the board would go out and sell bonds, municipal tax free bonds, for the amount of money of the referendum. We estimated a four percent, that's a high estimate on purpose. We, 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 everything we did, we rounded off. To, to a higher circumstance given inflation and the time that it's gonna to take to do all this. We estimated 4%. Interestingly, a district similar to us in another county just had a referendum passed at the, during the last uh, county time for referendum. They got a 3.65% uh, bond rate. The bond rates tend to be a little bit better than the mortgage rates and things like that. We, we don't, we, we plan for four in, in, in a way to be careful. I don't believe they're going to be poor as well as our financial advice. We can use Phoenix, a company that is well renowned across the state. I got from the account that, that you're a 4%, and that, as you say, may be high, that on this $26 million bond would be $12,660,000, and if we get state aid, that would knock it down to $8,407,030, if that number is kind of filled with what you're thinking. Now, my numbers are on paper. I, Excuse me, when I stand in front of the group, remember $8 million is not going to be something I'm very yeah, strong about. Right. And, and my last question, I don't hold it up, is uh, real quick. I, I've had people ask me uh, why the special election that you have to pay for versus in the general election. Two reasons. A, we wanted to get it as soon as possible because of the potential of inflation and, and the rates. B, we were the last district to be approved for September because there was a backlog in the, in the uh, facilities project. We would not have been able to have a November ref, uh, referendum. There were two backlogs. We would have got the approvals in time. We would have gone on to the next calendar year. Thank you. Thank you very much.
I'm, I'm sorry, how many students total are in the district right now, enrolled right now? Uh, we ended up at about 1,430 last year, and I uh, expect that number to be close to 3 million this year. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Ron. Thank you.
personally, eighth grade or better? Well, seventh grade. Seven grade. Personally, I grew up in Pound Brook. We had seventh to eighth, all the way to twelfth in one school, and it was fun. So, I, you know, I don't have a problem with saying I'm okay with that because I grew up that way. It was fun. Um, but when it comes down to money and other stuff with, with the school, we have to look at what the school's giving our kids compared to, you know, what we're actually getting from them in, in the end. That's all. So, but we're getting information. That's the whole thing. Yeah, and, getting information. and the only reason why I bring that up is because I know when we got to move eighth graders to high school, it wasn't a popular decision. Oh, it's never a popular decision. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and if we decide to do seventh graders, yeah. I think the enrollment numbers that are talking about is going to continue. It's just going to go down because people are going to leave. People like myself who care, who volunteer, who are at things, we're just going to go with that. Thank you. More public. Winter to one ten Staten Trail. I grew up in Bergen County in Ramsey, and my father was superintendent of schools probably until I graduated. In fact, I was promoted to superintendent of schools the year I graduated. And it was pretty much drilled in my head every Wednesday night when we headed out or whatever for a board of ed meeting that the confrontation that about the schools was never a town issue. It was confrontation was usually with the board of ed. If the council doesn't understand that the foundation of a town is your school system, and that's what draws people in, I don't understand who you want moving into this town. Houses going for $500,000 now compared to when I moved in 20 years ago, 22 years ago, they were 200 or less. The school system has gone down and we need to build it back up. And I only hope that people go out and vote and that the small percentage that does show up in this town that votes, and I hope every one of you goes, votes yes. Because if our town continues to disintegrate on the school level, there will be no HAPACOM. It will be a transient village. No one will be here, my opinion. But this is how I was raised, and this is what was instilled in me by a man who was passionate about the education system and worked his whole life for this, amongst my mother, brother, sister, all being teachers, me having a degree in education. There should be no question that this referendum should go through. There should be no question on any of your minds why you're questioning why it's going through. Thank you. More public? Um, Sarah Narali, 167 Madison Trail. I just moved here last month. Um, Sarah Donnelly. in that county, so I did go to kindergarten through eighth grade in one building, which I most people are like, why would you want kindergarten through eighth grade? So I did go down to, go through the big of seventh grade and went into high school. Um, I'm 47, so I live not far from the 47 mark, and I'm from the Lawrence Valley School District, and the, the school does have representation, and people don't want conversation that was apparently overheard and what I said was that um, the, the high school the scoreboard at the high school game field broke last year in late October and I'm frustrated 
that out of a 35 plus million dollar budget, there wasn't some money in capital reserve or somewhere else that that scoreboard couldn't have been repaired or replaced at least with a base model similar to what we have before this game season. It's still broken. I feel that's an embarrassment. We're now operating with a temporary portable scoreboard that's, I don't know, four by five. I think that's, to me, that's not acceptable. If it broke yesterday, that would be different, but it didn't. It's been broken for 10 months. That, that was the frustration. That's my frustration, and that's the comment I made. Well, you can fight it. Right, so. I'm going to send a motion to approve the minutes of 8-16-2023. Block 
Yes. Ms. Robert. Yes. Ms. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. And Ms. Fiam. Yes. Uh, now what? <coughs> ordinance 22-2023 bond ordinance acquisition of fire apparatus vehicles for fire and safety purposes. So moved. Second. So moved. Mr. Hopper Camp. Yes. Ms. Robert. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Ms. Fiam. Yes. Ordinance 22-2023, Chapter 118, Nonprofit Rapid Entry Test. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopper Camp. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Ms. Fiam. Yes. Ordinance is final hearing. Ordinance 2023-2023, Smoke Detector Inspection. So moved. Second. I'll open this up to the public for any comments. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 